Hello, and welcome to the show that we hope will finally answer the intriguing historical question, who really discovered America? We are privileged today to have seven candidates competing for the title of true discoverer of America. Let's get on with the show. First, from faraway China, a Buddhist monk who says he sailed the Pacific to sunny California in 495 A.D. Welcome, Hoi Shin. Next is an Irish monk who claims he traveled across the Atlantic in 550 AD in a small boat made of animal skins. Welcome, Brendan the Bold. And now I introduce two stalwart sons of Scandinavia. The first is a Norse merchant who says he stumbled upon America in 986 AD after being blown off course over 2,000 miles. Meet Bjarni Harjofsson. <laughs> And now we meet our second Scandinavian. He's a bachelor from Greenland who loves playing hockey, drinking ale, and laying waste to villages. Welcome, will you, Leif Erikson, a Viking warrior and adventurer who says he discovered, landed, and plundered America in the year 1000 AD. Our fifth explorer is a Welsh prince who says he met and frolicked with some pretty Indian maidens in 1170 AD and then founded a colony that would last 100 years. Meet Prince Maddock of Wales. Welcome, Your Highness. Our next explorer is an admiral. He's from Italy and claims he discovered America for the Spanish crown in 1492 on the first of four voyages to the New World. Welcome, Admiral Christopher Columbus. <laughs>
Finally, we have a true Native American, a man whose ancestors have been here, he claimed, for at least 50,000 years. I expect this man has some strong, straight language he wishes to direct to these men who claim to have been first to the New World. So here's our final guest this evening, Chief Howling Wind of the Cree Nation. And now that we have everyone seated, let's explain how the show will take place. I will ask questions of each guest, hoping for straightforward, direct answers. Each, each candidate will try to convince our studio audience that he is the true Discover America. Let's begin our questions with Hoi Shin. Honorable one from the inscrutable Orient, we welcome you today. Tell us why you left such a, a, chi a chi such a Chinese civilization to cross a great ocean to come to a savage place. I left my great civilization to cross the ocean to spread my Buddhist way of life to these primitives. Please give us details of your voyage. Ah, I left in 452 AD, following the westerly winds due west to the coast of California. I completed my 7,000 mile voyage in 495 AD, arriving back in China. Sounds like you stayed overnight a few times. Just how long were you gone? I was gone for about 43 years. Did you take any notes while you're away? If so, how do we know these notes are accurate? Yes, I kept in a detailed account of my life in Fuzang. It had information about the Indian tribes. My information has been found strikingly right from experts on early Indian civilization. Tell us about your boat. Just how did you make it across the ocean into the unknown? My boat was called a Chinese junk. My people were very advanced in the art of shipbuilding, which would explain how I made it across the great ocean. Of the people you visited, are there any traces today that you might have been there? Yes. There were unmistakable Asian tapestries, paintings, and wall drawings that have been made by the Chinese people. We hear you might have lost a ship or at least a couple anchors off the Californian coast. Want to tell us about this? Yes. In the 1600s, a San Francisco monk reported evidence of a sailing vessel off the coast of California. And then in the 1970s, there were two of my stolen anchors found, one off the coast of Palos Verdes and the other just north of San Francisco. Thank you, Hoi Shen. Now let's hear from the great Irish monk, Brendan the Bold. Father Brendan, tell us a little about yourself. Why do people call you the Bold? Because I left a, a nice place to come to a place which many people called paradise. Why did you decide to depart on this incredible journey? What were you looking for? I was looking for paradise. Tell us about your first voyage. What type of ship did you go in and where did you go? I sailed in a 12 foot long boat with covered with animal skins and a wooden frame. And I went to Iceland, Greenland, Newfoundland, and then back to Southern Ireland. 
how's your next voyage even more challenging? I went the exact same route, but instead of coming back from, I from Newfoundland, I went to St. Augustine, Florida, and then I went to the Bermuda Isle, then I went back to Ireland. Sir, you present quite an incredible story. Let's see if you can, can convince us with some proof. How can the Irish scholar Tim Severin help prove your story? He sailed in the exact same boat with the exact same food rations and with the exact same route as I did, and he found it very possible to do what I did. Your story was widely spread in Europe in many versions and in many languages. How do we know what to believe? Since my story started in Ireland, you believe the, the very true story of my voyages from Ireland. The Irish sagas are just stories, aren't they? Why should we believe them? You shouldn't believe them all because a lot of the time they come from other countries and we just hear about it. But this one's true. My voyage started in Ireland and ended in Ireland. You should always believe where it first came from, not from where you hear it. Did Brendan's Isle ever appear on any maps or globes? Yes, it did. It appeared right here. This is the Faroe Islands in which my island should be but is not today because it has been mistaken for other islands in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Father Brendan, for sharing your exploits with us today. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to pre present the first of our two Scandinavian explorers. Welcome to the Norseman, Bjarni Harjulsson. Welcome, Bjarni. Tell us about your life as a North Trader before you became the discoverer of America. Well, I traveled between Norway and Iceland each year and spent my winters in foreign countries. Then I returned to Norway each year to see my beloved father. Is it really true you discovered America while look, trying to find your father? Oh, yeah. When I went off looking for my father, a terrible storm came up and blew me off course nearly 2,000 miles to present-day Massachusetts. Please tell us about your voyage, what you saw, and what you experienced. Well, on my voyage, a terrible storm came up and blew me to present-day Massachusetts. And then from there, I sailed north to Greenland. Wow, what a voyage. Well, let's see those dirty boots from all the land you explored. You did land, didn't you? Well, actually, no, I didn't land. When I got to present-day Massachusetts, my crew asked me to land. But no, it was much too green and forestly to be Greenland. So I sailed north to Greenland and found my father. What is the difference between a Norse trader and a Viking? Well, the difference between a Norse trader and a Viking is a Norse trader travels around trading with people and a Viking steals from people and murders people. We understand, but didn't you take a little criticism from the Vikings for not landing? Oh, yeah. I was summoned by King Olaf to tell my story in the year 1001 AD. He, I received verbal abuse and was threatened with physical abuse. Other than your own personal account, is there any other record of your voyage? Oh, yeah. There was an account in the Viking sagas called the Flatty Jawbok. Being blown off 2,000 miles off course, ending up in what now is now Mass present-day Massachusetts, that's a pretty fantastic story. Is it possible that this could have really happened? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Viking ships were made to withstand even the strongest ones. So, yes, it would be very possible. We understand that you met Leif Erikson. Tell us about this meeting. 
Well, when I met Leif, he came to me and bought my ship. Then he took some of my crew and went off to get credit for the true discoverer of America. I do not think that is fair gratitude because I was the one who found the route for all these other explorers who claimed to discover America. Thanks, Bjarni, for the details about your voyage. Now let's hear from your fellow countryman, Leif Erikson. Aren't you the eldest son of a famous Viking family? Yeah, I am the eldest son of the notorious Viking murderer, Eric the Red. What made you decide to explore the new world, and how does Bjarni Herjulsson enter into the picture? Well, I had heard about Bjarni's voyage, but that he didn't land. So I went to Greenland, and I bought his ship, and I enlisted a crew of 35, some of which were his, was his own men. Tell us about your trip. Did you explore the land like a true Viking? Yeah, we set up colonies everywhere we landed. What did you call the new land? Well, I saw many um, vines with grapes growing on them, so I called it Vinland. Did your discovery lead to colonization? Yes, but not for long, because a couple years after, there was a, there's a disease called smallpox that wiped it out. Did you personally colonize Vinland? No, even though my brother, even though I should have, my brother did. Is there a written account of your voyage? Yeah, I kept a written log of my voyage. Have archaeologists found any evidence of Viking colonies in the New World? Yeah, they have found Viking bones, tools, weapons, and parts of Viking coats and houses. Is there any other physical evidence that Vikings were were in America during this time? Yeah, archaeologists have found anchors, holes that were used to anchor Viking ships and Viking ships themselves. What can you tell us about the Vinland map? Well, the Vinland map shows Sweden, Greenland, and what is now North America. Well, I sailed from Sweden to Greenland, and that's where I met Bjarni, and I bought his ship. And then from Greenland, I sailed to Baffin Island, and then to many parts of Canada, and then to what is now Cape Cod in Massachusetts. Our thanks to the great Our thanks to the great Viking Leif Erikson. Now let's hear of the exploits of some authentic royalty. Ladies and gentlemen, Prince Maddock of Wales. Why did you leave your homeland? After my father died, my brothers and I were involved in a bloody civil war to see who would be the next king. Tell us about your voyage. Where did you travel and where did you land? My journey took me in a southwesterly direction into the Gulf of Mexico. I went in and up the Mississippi River and settled in what is now Louisville, Kentucky. Was it a pretty good sized expedition? How many ships? There was an armada of ten ships. So you finally landed and settled. How successful was your colony? How did it get wiped out? My colony was successful for a hundred years, and it was wiped out by the tribes, by the local tribes capturing us and slaughtering us. 
How do the Mandan in Indians figure into your story? Well, after the Welsh colony was destroyed, the Mandan Indians were cast out and spread out all along North America. They were followers of me. Ah, so you have some real tangible proof. Show us one and we might be convinced. Bring out the blue-eyed savage. Are there any final words you can say to convince us that you are the true discoverer of America? There is no real evidence that my colony ever does exist. But I say that my colony is lying right under Louisville, Kentucky. Ancient stories are always rooted in their truths. Thank you, Prince Maddox. And now let's hear from the great Admiral Christopher Columbus. Sir, tell us how the Christopher Columbus story began. That began when I was learning about Marco Polo and I wanted to be as famous as him and get rich with gold and spices and sail west and end up east. What was your mission or theory in the late 1400s? Like I said before, it was to sail west and end up east. The, and the voyages and the voyage itself, was it beset with problems and obstacles? Yes, yes, it was. It was set with many storms, with my sails whipped and my ropes torn. Was your crew fearful out there in the arch, in the uncharted Atlantic? Yes, at October 9th, I told them we, three more days and we would turn back. If we didn't find them on October 12th, they could kill me. Tell us about the famous landing on the Caribbean island. I went, I got down on my knees and said, I'll play off planks. Where were you, Admiral? Were you, Admiral, successful in finding wealth and colonizing this new land? I think I was, but many people says I wasn't because I killed many Indians. Admiral, we've asked all the others for solid proof of their discovery. For, this, for their discoveries. What proof does historian Samuel Elliot Morrison use to bolster your claim? Well, he found many anchors and parts of my ship and many of my men. Any physical proof or archeological remains to prove your claim, sir? Yes, Martin. On my first voyage, I came down from Spain and went all, and went to Cuba, then Hispaniola, and then Puerto Rico, and went back to Spain. So on my second voyage, I went I went to Haiti, and then I went back to I went down and discovered uh, Jamaica. Then um, I went back to Hispaniola and found my men dead there, and the Indians had killed them, so I had to kill the Indians. I went back to Spain. Then I came, I went back and went to back to San Salvador and went to Cuba, and then I had to kill as many more Indians because of they killed my men in another colony I was made. I went back to Spain and then the Queen told me one more chance, and if I didn't find any gold, I would, they would be killed. So I went. So I went to back to Haiti and Jamaica, and I went partly to Pumos Fijo in South America. Then I had killed more Indians because they had tried to attack me, and then some. Then I went to the uh, Armada was sent out to kill me and bring me, will bring me back alive to Spain because they heard of what I'd done. So they came back, they went to Pool Fimo, um, 
they brought me back to Spain, but when I got there, the queen had died, so they let me go, and I, li I died in 1504 in Palo, Spain, in wealth colonization. Admiral, thanks for joining us today. Now for our last guest this evening. He's been he's been waiting patiently and listen listened to all the others. Welcome, will you, Chief Howling Wind of the Cree Nation? Welcome, Chief Howling Wind. Sir, let's get right to the subject. Why are you here today? I mean, why is an Indian on on a panel show with these great ocean pilots. I am here to to um, convince the studio audience that my people discovered America first. So you've been given a raw 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 deal in Amer American history, eh? Let's hear your story. First off, when did your ancestors come to America? Perhaps fifty thousand years ago. And where did they come from? And where did they come from on this very difficult journey? Explain the route they took. They came from Central Asia, Siberia, and they crossed what is now the Bering Strait. How come, Chief, you Native Americans have been given so little recognition, rec recognition of true discoverer of America? Because there was no drama in my people's arrival. So Indians didn't write history. Do you have do you have any other evidence that you were here? Some of these men on the panel show claim that they were here first, but even they all said that they have seen Indians, so therefore we must have been here first. Thank you, Chief Howlingwind. And there we have it, six great explorers and one Native American critic. You, who do you think what is the true discoverer of America? The vote is up to you. Do you think it's Hoi Shin from China? Or maybe you think it's the Irish monk, Brendan the Bold. Or maybe it's the Norse trader from Scandinavia, Bjarni Herjufsen. Or maybe you even think it's the Vi Viking warrior, Leif Erikson. Or perhaps it could be His Royal Highness Prince Maddock of Wales. Or maybe you think it's Christopher Columbus who, sta who sailed in 1492. But you could agree, you could agree with Chief Howling Wind that none of the, none of these men on the None of these men on the panel show were first. <laughs> 